<laughs> but um, all right. So question number three: unrealistic pressures on a society oh, from okay. black, huh? While we own it, can we go ahead and talk about like what the guys want since we on like ideal dates and stuff? You know what? Yeah, that's about, like, yeah, let's so, talk about because somebody in the comments had asked what do guys oh Marie had asked uh Daniel what do guys like? So that might be a good segue into what that what that looks like. Because you know, it's been a you know, for a while, it's just been really women celebrating Valentine's Day. Like guys just do stuff for the women. They don't really care about it. But I feel like now as things are progressing, guys are like, you know, well, we want something too. And, you know, at one point it got, okay, we want something too. And they just got the cookie for Valentine's Day. That was like the thing. Now and that's it's like, we don't want Valentine's Day gift. No, like, it's not. We don't want that. The same thing yeah, I've been getting the it's, other it's, 364 look, look, days. It's, it's not, it's not a <laughs> gift, but I'm just saying that's just like how it naturally happened. Like, oh, you bought me some flowers and candy okay i'm gonna give you this but now it's just like no we don't want that we want something thoughtful too and we want you to put some uh thought into getting gifts for us so i'm interested to see what do guys want for right. valentine's day gifts. And, guys, and guys that are watching also drop drop in the comment section like what would y'all like you know somebody already said picnic too so that's kind of like i guess that's kind of like a hot hot when it is the picnics d d moses said a ps5 no, you got that for Christmas. And if you didn't get that for Christmas, <laughs> then you didn't deserve it. But, <laughs> but it's basically, or, I mean, well, tax, black people do like to wait the tax time. But people ain't got their taxes yet. So, you know. Yeah. Okay, Dan, you the only guy on here, so you're going to have to speak for, for uh, your people tonight. Um, it just, I, it, that's a broad question. You know what I'm saying? It's, are we, for me, I can only speak for me. For me, yeah, speak for you. Speak for you. It's not necessarily about gifts for me. It's the same thing. One of y'all, I don't, I don't remember which one of y'all said it, but it's it's also the thought. Like if we're together for more than a year, right? So I do. I plan something romantic for our first Valentine's Day. What you gonna do next year? I'm gonna let, I'm gonna leave that up to you. You gonna plan that? We're gonna do something. Um, it does. It's not necessarily monetary for me or materialistic for me. If I did ask for something, it would be, um, you know, something that I would really want. Honestly and truly, a PS5 would be something that somebody would really want, and they would only get it on a special occasion. I'm not saying for me. I'm just saying. Yeah, and you are like, a gamer. I yeah, mean, so that would make. Do you have a PS5? I do not. I'm still on the Xbox One S. You want like, a PS5? I mean, I would love one. Yeah. Oh, right, ladies, one, but... wait to uh, wait till it's hardest. That PS Five. No, that, well, like I said, it's not necessarily materialistic. <laughs> like you know, what I'm saying it's not necessarily materialistic. <laughs> but for me, it's more. It's more so like I want to see where your creativity is when it comes to me. You right. know what I like to do. You know the things that I like. You know, Ooh. hopefully by that time. So what? If I'm, am I making sense? It just depends on the yeah. person. Somebody's gonna want to PS Five. Yeah. Somebody wants you to take them on a trip. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to, I want to be, you know, wind and dined a little bit. Like even if you take <laughs> care of the date, like you open my door. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, I wait like a minute that. now. I know that's what I'm like. <laughs> you're doing too much now. I'm saying, but I'm, that, I'm just using now, that as an I, I example. I sanitize your controllers <laughs> on your. your, your oh I sanitize my God. your controllers. <laughs> Not sanitizing. And wipe your headset off. Make sure it's clean for you. You know. No, I'm here for you. Talking about like you know that Usher song. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I'm yeah. here for you know it. I, I wait, is it the trading place. places? Yeah, yeah trading places. places. I that's what I was referring like, to. Because my thing is this: if I do this for you, oh, on okay, regular, now, right? okay, well, if I, I might do give. stuff. Okay, I see. Right, if I do yeah. something for you on a regular, if I'm opening your door, if I'm a complete gentleman to you, all the time, you know what I'm saying? It would, it just kind of would not to be a gentleman, obviously, but like it would be kind of nice to trade that place just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what? I'm, I do stuff on birthdays, so I guess Valentine's. It would be good to, to switch it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Somebody said they requested a candlelit uh, massage, massage with some good massage oils and some '90s R&B. That's Quentin. Quentin That's went cute. to uh, college with me. That's nice. That's a nice vibe. Listen, I, like see, that. But I do vibe. stuff like that vibe. already, though. So I would have to. That's why I was like, I wanted something built because I do stuff like that already. Yeah, okay then but yeah that's that's a nice vibe with some 90s r&b like yes lord that's oh, I love some jagged turn turn to the uh the, turn to like the key sweat station on pandora okay. that is some good or the mary j blige 
Take no, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here for all of that. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. That's that's different hearing a guy says that because most women be like, oh, I need a, a body. You know, a massage is a great thing. Like like I said, I, I do those things anyway, like especially for guys that like work real hard. So women take from this that guys actually do want massage. Like to be quite honest with yeah. you. Like how we get like self-care days, like we, which typically is just going to get our hair done, our nails done, our feet done. Like surprise your guy like every quarter or something with a massage, like a professional massage, you and, know. And also take into consideration that it's not always, it doesn't always have to be sexual. Right, exactly. You can be intimate without being sexual. That's intimacy Absolutely. on another level. Let me just be close to you. You know what I'm saying? A, a nice massage is, is really like intimacy on another level. It doesn't always have to lead to intercourse. Shit, he gonna fall asleep. To <laughs> be quite honest with you, they probably gonna end up falling asleep because it's relaxing it's soothing you know right. it's neat oh yeah that you know what this reminds me of too while i'm thinking about it um i don't know if you, i said it when i was on live but y'all remember that one time i was talking about um that game that you can like the card uh, game yeah, where you can ask game. questions yeah yeah the mentally stimulate me they have another one like that but it's more <laughs> physical and so you do the card games and it'll tell you different things to do like it'll say like it'll say blindfold the person and blindfold the person and you you have to like kiss a certain part of their body or they have to like do something like that's another thing that that's that could be um you know something that you would do um when it's just y'all too right marie is so she's having them drawers coming up you girl you're so southern <laughs> i'm trying to feel her though <laughs> What she say? I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get my, um, she said them dry, when, about the, the massage for a man and stuff. And then we were yeah. talking about, it doesn't have to lead to sex. <laughs> and she was like, oh no, them drawers coming off. <laughs> That's keep, so funny. Keep the panties on, you know, but, um, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's real important. Like that's what I, I promise you. I, I realized last year when the world was locked down that a lot of guys were stepping up um because i saw a lot of uh videos home videos of where women were saying my man did this and it was stuff in the backyard like they was just turning their whole backyard they would hire someone um to come in and like decorate you know just a little area do um a little chef a personal chef will come in and cook oh and, yeah that's you know doing too. like hibachi style like somebody actually reached out to me wanting to do a hibachi style um a birthday dinner but i don't have that flat top grill thing and i'm in the phase of trying not to buy more equipment but i, I was like that's a great idea yeah, which I, I, I probably consider doing that um after i get my food truck built like offering hibachi style like um stuff but um but yeah um basically women if you ain't already stepped up like men want to be appreciated men want to be they want to you know because i have been seeing about that they was like i don't want the as he said yeah. daddy said the same thing that they've been getting, you know, just putting on some lingerie, just dressing it up. But that's good, different. though, because, you know, I think, you know, I think a lot of females wanted to do things for guys and to be more intimate and to be more thoughtful. But it kind of was just like, are they going to appreciate those things? Is that something that they're going to want? So it's nice to hear that, like, yeah, we want to, you know, kind of be wanted on, too. Right. You gotta ask the man though. That's all I got to say. Cause right, yeah. I'm of not course, I'm yeah. very not typical. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a typical dude. So that I could be by myself on that. You know, people but some men probably be like, I don't care. I don't I don't you think you're saying? by yourself on that. I just may not be like it may not be like vocal by it, but trust yeah. me, when they get back to work and stuff, they go like, yo, my girl, yo, my girl, she like she got the room this week. She got the you know, oh, like they're gonna, gonna be bragging about it. Oh, they yeah, for sure. About it. Guys, they love to brag about it when they girl do something for them. They be ready to tell their friends at home, Oh, yeah, she got me this, and she did this, and she did that. They be ready to let somebody know. <laughs> yep, they do. All right, so let's do the um, I, actually, that question when we went into that, that was like four. So let's go back up to um, three the unrealistic pressures of society for a black man. So one of them is like the pressure of Valentine's Day. You know, like you got to get the girl this. You got because it is kind of centered around women, where you do have to un 
sprinting wise, you do have to get a woman a great gift so she can go back and brag about it to her friends. Like, hence, I told y'all, you know, what today's what Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I got three days. If my social media crush proposes to his <laughs> girlfriend, I am going to flip everything. Oh, you see this chair in, the, in my background? You see this table? You see that <laughs> chair? You see this flowers? It's going to be freaking Wait, up. like your crush, ha- you, your crush has a girlfriend? Hell yeah. Oh. And they happy. <laughs> oh, Whitney, it's going to happen. She knows know, it's just going to happen. It's going to <laughs> just, um, just not, just not a. <sighs> Daniel, we're gonna have to have another therapy session because I'm just not ready for this. I'm not ready for my. <sighs> All right. So basically, the, the question I was getting at was okay, the pressures of men in society. So Valentine's Day is coming up. Women want y'all to get them great gifts so they can go brag about it. So one of the things is, you know, oh my God, I got engaged, you know, like, so you can, you, I don't think you can top getting engaged on Valentine's or top getting engaged, like during any holiday, you know, oh, which we had a, a episode, you, you guys can go on the YouTube page and it's the I've Noticed podcast um, playlist where we actually discuss like, do you want to get engaged during a holiday? So would you want to get engaged like during Valentine's, which I think most of us said no let it be its own separate day. So, Daniel, do you feel like men are pressured? Like, what are some of like the uh, unrealistic pressures of society that it has for y'all? Like, you got to do this, you got to do that. I like, do you feel thing. something simple? Like, do you feel like you got to open up the door for the woman? Do you feel like you know you have to propose within two years? Like, what's what's some pressures? Um. Is it any pressure or just pressure? Any, any okay. unrealistic think, pressures. Like, you feel like we don't have to do that, but society thinks that we have to do that. The main thing for me is having all my stuff together by a certain age. That's the oh, main thing. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's a, that's a yeah. big one. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, compared to that, nothing else is even close to pressure. Like, I always, I always had the issue that I thought, okay, I graduate high school i graduated at 17 so and you know turning 18 i'm supposed to be out of college the four years after that i'm supposed to be in my in my uh in my career i'm supposed to be on my way to being financially stable so i can take care of my wife and my family now you know i'm saying because i'm not financially stable now that pushes back me potentially finding a mate because that's also a thing we a woman wants to find a man who is stable financially mentally everything like that so it's all like Every with every passing birthday for me after 24 was like, what am I doing? Really? Yeah, Mm. man. Yeah. Uh, Like that's just how it was for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wanted to, I wanted to have my stuff together as a man by 25 so I can start searching for my that was unrealistic with mine. Yeah, that's that's pressure. That's that's pressure. You know what I'm saying? I put that pressure on myself because I'm like, okay, well, I want to be starting to look for my wife at 25. You know what I'm saying? Like I want, I always wanted to be married young. I always wanted to have kids young so I can be youthful with my kids. That's just what it was. Um, so just having my stuff together was the biggest pressure on me. And then being a young black man and already stereotyped, I'm already three laps behind almost, you know, the the every other race almost, you know, being being, you know what I'm saying? So that's pressure upon pressure upon pressure. Now I gotta be twice as good as the next man to get that job, to get that that internship. You know what I'm right. saying? To get that, to get that role that we was talking about earlier when we was talking about acting. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's what it was for me. You know, it, and it, I still feel that. And I'm 27. Mm-hmm. Like man, like I, I feel like men have a biological clock, not biological, but a clock, just like the woman has her biological clock. Mm-hmm. Like a man has a clock. Like I'm supposed to have this by this age. If I don't have this, I'm a failure. Oh, you, you know, know what? what? And we put pressure on y'all too. I just, it just hit me when well, you said it. And that's what it is. Like y'all put pressure on us. Really I damn sure do. Cause I'm like, he still stay with his mama. Like, oh, I ain't right. doing that. Uh-huh. And the crazy thing, the crazy thing about that is like, I was talking to, I, I had a conversation with a Caucasian friend of mine. And we had the conversation on like help with fam within families. And they're talking about like how a lot of Caucasian people, their their parents are letting them stay in the house that are darn near 30. Yeah. 
they don't graduated college. You can come back home. You got five years to stack up your bread. You know what I'm saying? For us, and that's it's like, so okay, helpful, well, though. That's you so go to hard. college. It is. You know, get out. Don't come back if you go to college. You know what I'm saying? By the time you turn 18, if you want to go to college, when you graduate college, you ain't coming back here. That's what a lot of stigma for us. You know what I'm saying? So that puts pressure on us and then more pressure is being put. And I don't think y'all do it on purpose, but it's, you know, a lot of women, they, they want a man that's stable. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, it's hard now because it's like, well, I like you. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what life is going to take us. But I'm not where I need to be in life to to so I'm automatically like written off. I'm automatically defeated because well, I'm not it, where de- I it be depends because I'm I'm gonna step in because I I sprinkle a little bit of that energy. Um, I'm more realistic, you know. I'm not. I just feel like for you because what you you say you're 27, right? Mm-hmm. So you're real life. You're doing better than the 38 year old that I know. Like the 38 year old is staying with his mom. And doesn't have a car and da, 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 and doesn't have a job. And then you know, like, so I would compare you two and I'd be like, bro, get your shit together. Like, it makes no sense that somebody is like 10 years, you know, younger than you, and you ain't what's the problem? But I totally agree that Caucasian people do give their children time, but I think you also gotta look at the parents. The parents mm-hmm. are financially stable. So it, typically in black us households, yeah. we're usually coming from a single parent home who, yeah. where we seen our mom like struggle, you know, um, and then we typically had to grow up earlier than what we supposed to like, I uh, had to do responsibilities, you yeah. know, cause I, instead of me, uh, couldn't wait for like prom or getting a car and stuff like that. Like I was like, oh, I, I need to get a job. I need to do this. And, you know, instead of the money, like I had to help my mom pay bills. Like I just, I jokingly say, even when I was in high school that me and my mom was roommates because I was helping pay rent, you know, right, which right. I kind of look, I, I say jokingly that I'm damaged, <laughs> you know, I'm a little damaged or fucked up a little bit by it. Um, but I'm responsible now, you know, um, but uh, and I, I'm one of those people that's an advocate for like, why you don't have your own place? Like, why you don't? But I just don't think it's not acceptable for people to be in their parents' home that's like over 30 and don't have no freaking plan. Like, you're right. not in a you right. don't have a career. You're not saving up for anything like it, it, that's pointless. Like, I can't a fine line. There's yeah, like, I can't be line. with that type of person. Now, like with you, I would deal with you. You know, because I see that you're doing things, you have a plan, you're actually implementing them, you're doing this, you're doing, like, no. Just somebody who's just, oh, we don't, I don't have to pay rent, and, you know, I'm just chilling, like, so when are you going to move out, what, 45? Like, no, I don't have no plan. Like, I don't feel comfortable going to visit a guy at his mom's house, like, I don't want to do that. Because first off, I don't want to talk to the moms, because I want to get to know the son first, because I don't even know if this is going to last. Right. I need to get to know you. How am I gonna get to know you and your mama and they frying chicken and shit? You know I want peace. Like, <laughs> but then I got to talk to her about it. You know, right, right. I just I agree. Yeah, there is a fine line. A fine so, line. what's some unrealistic pressures, you guys? Um, Keith, Courtney, Whitney. Um, what's some unrealistic pressures that y'all think about? Um, that y'all know that society put on men. Um. I think Daniel kind of hit it like right on the head. I think that was that will kind of be like a top one is that they do society already expects guys to already have it together. Because mm-hmm. when you think about it, it's just like when we think of the roles that men and women have based on what society says, the men are the providers and protectors. So if you are providing, I think they expect guys to be matured in that area so it is kind of like you have to you know kind of grow up fast you know like you said you know it's on the time you're on the time schedule you know you graduate if you're going to college or if you're not then you know they expect you to have a job you'll be able to bring home the money you know be able to take support a household or be able to do xyz but we never really stop to think like you know they're people just trying to figure their lives out too and another thing that I was gonna say is I think a lot of more guys should express the the pressures that they're going through and not just, you know, 
keep it all in or just expect everybody to know like, oh, it's hard out here for a guy. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, we'll never get anywhere. We always try to compare, especially in a black community, who has it worse, black women or who has it worse, black men, because we all have our our issues and things that we face. But I think it's very important for guys who don't, you know, they don't normally show or express their feelings about certain things, like express those pressures that you're having, um, especially like with your mate, like they should know like the things that you have to deal with on the daily, because at the same time, you're trying to make it to where they're also being supportive and they're trying to alleviate whatever pain or whatever, you know, that you may be going through. Like that's probably something that they can help with or try to, you know, alleviate some of the, the stress that you may be having so I think it's important for guys to vocalize the pressures and things that they're facing um on the daily totally or agree. whatever you know I totally agree. definitely and I think I women when a, when a guy finally does decide to do that that's big like when a guy yeah. expresses himself that's like big so when you hit when you when your guy that you're dealing with are just a male friend or whom, whomever a family member if they're choosing to um discuss that with you like come to you openly and say man i'm, I'm stressed serious. out like mm-hmm. listen please listen like yeah because you never know because guys do not communicate and they just well. if you if they if you say listen and they t- they try to tell you you just like shut them down like they ain't gonna say nothing else never yeah. again <laughs> like, and and not just to we'll you period them. they're not yeah. big yeah. so please yeah. take away from this conversation listen and then That's also not even just do. don't don't even initiate it like just say hey how was your day like i'm real big on that like i'm real big on how was your day like what did you eat today like what's how are you today like how you feeling you know did you sleep you know you know stuff like that so and those usually are like an icebreaker like a conversation they'd be like man let me tell you about because men have issues too at work like the same way we come home and be like let me tell you about rebecca with her trifling stuff you know guys you know <laughs> it's always a guy at the job ass kissing the supervisor or, or telling mm-hmm. the person because they was out there smoking the only smoke break when it was you know so just listen that's all you know and sometimes you do got to initiate it though speaking from a man yeah sometimes yeah. sometimes you have to be like babe something's different what's wrong yeah you know what i'm saying talk to me because a lot of times like it's already hard enough growing up man like we were already taught, you know, boys don't cry. Boys mm-hmm. don't talk about their feelings. Like, if you do that, you weak. You know what I'm saying? And, and and this is coming from somebody who is now not afraid to talk about his feelings. You know what I'm saying? But every, like, every time I talked about my feelings in the past, it was like, why are you complaining? You just need uh-huh. to, you need, I literally had a female say, that sounds like you being negative. And I'm like, I'm not being negative. I'm trying, I'm trying to release what is inside because like keeping that inside is like a bad fart you can die if you don't pass gas you know what i'm saying like you can literally lose your life right you know what i'm saying and release needs to be as far as like letting your innermost thoughts out needs to be you know it, it needs to be accepted and it wasn't accepted for the longest time and that's the reason why men are so guarded when it comes to that because as soon as that happens and the girl throws it up in their face are you a weak man you weak for yeah that. you know what i'm saying it's like well if i'm weak i ain't never telling you nothing again you know what I'm yeah saying? And then she's gonna be like six months later you don't ever talk to me well i yeah. try <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. so yeah and i think somebody in the comments had dropped something um to um daniel to kind of go with what you just said they said that you know as black men we are taught to be tough and we often hear women wanting their men to be masculine 100 percent of the time right. and to be the alpha males in all situations and then the moment he said, the moment I feel comfortable to open up and be vulnerable is the moment I know it's real. Right. And that's facts. That's right. facts. Right. Right. I didn't even see that before I started talking. That, yeah. That's, and, that's um, just facts. Facts. facts, uh, facts. It's true. Uh, Cause Nate said, uh, the pressure gets real. Got to have someone to talk to. So it's, it's important to um, be that listening ear. And then um, Daniel said it as well. Women initiated and then also not just on women like guys like y'all hang around each other y'all play games y'all go to the bar wherever y'all go like ask your homeboy hey what's what's good like is everything good at home you know how you know initiate conversation we can't talk to with our with our with our male friends and that's just what it is you know what i'm saying like there's just some things we can't talk to we can't we can't 
talk to what I now, I mean our closest friends like my best friend knows everything about me but a lot of men a lot of like men don't have best friends their best friend is their girl their woman their wife you know okay. what I'm saying and a lot of times we'd rather confide in y'all than we would our friend because our friends will be sometimes worse than y'all a little bit you know what I'm saying I hate to say it like that but in all some right. not all circumstances but in some circumstances it's it's just like, man, why you, you know, you being weak. Don't bring that negative energy around me. You know what I'm saying? Because they're already going through something themselves. So they can't afford to hear nobody else's. Okay. Kiki. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I want to say something to that though. But like, actually remember the video that I did. Um, that first live I did as far as I was like defending our men. Yeah. Um. All like all everything that everybody has said is basically what I said in that video. Um. As far as the the guys like men being pressured when they're outside because society has raised them with the a man can't cry or uh, a man can't like if you do this or you do that then you're not a man and all that stuff which is like absolutely fake and yeah I know Michelle coming. So it's absolutely fake on the basis of when I told y'all before that Adam was made from dust. What happens to dust when it gets wet? So that's where that bone came in that and gave that structure. And that bone came in and it, it's the stronghold of it. And the fact that the woman was made from that rib, which is the, at the, connected to that rib cage, which protects the organs, the heart, the lungs. That's why if you're not careful and you break your ribs, you can puncture a lung, you can puncture a heart. So the whole the whole fact of it is like guys are always they're raised with that 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 pressure as far as how they're supposed to be and how they're not supposed to be. But also, like you guys said before, the woman supposed to, at least should be the solution. Like, don't don't let him have to face the troubles out here and they got to come home to you, too. Like. Mm. He already, he already. You preaching, sis. <laughs> so crazy. You like you are. He already got this this thing with people outside Come and on, peer somebody. pressure and the boys and and got a whole hold of standing and stuff like that. Like if that dude came financially make it today, he should be able to call you and say, hey, um, like can you help me? And you should you shouldn't have no problem say, well, what you do with your money? Well, what? Nah, just just go ahead and and help help the man if you gonna help him or whatever the case may be. But don't make him feel less of a man just because he fell short today. I mean, the Bible tell you we'll all fall short. It's not necessarily just a glory, but we'll all fall short. So the whole thing is, he has the problems outside. How about let him come home to a solution versus coming home to another problem? Because then, like he said, because like he said, you so crazy, Dave. But like he said, though, like we'll be like, well, why you ain't talking to me? That's because that man can't trust you with his feelings. He can't trust you with his heart. He, and that's he can't important. trust you. <laughs> Very important. That's important. That's a word. We need to put you on the docket to speak. <laughs> to preach. <laughs> reverend. <laughs> no, 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 Reverend. No, Reverend. No, re- <laughs> Prophet. Prophet. He was preaching. Just no, now. no, 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 Prophet. No. <laughs> but bring the title down just a little bit. Bring it down. <laughs> Minister, we'll take that. If it, if it, yeah, that's better. That's better because because them other titles out there is like, oh, they go through so much. <laughs> oh, Lord. I got a question, though. I got a question. So this is kind of to what Kista said about, you know, he's going through problems out in the world. And when he comes home, he doesn't need that space, you know, to be he needs that to be a safe space where he can just come and be at peace. Absolutely. So where does, where do women put those emotions or, you know, the things that we face as far, cause I mean, of course, again, you know, men, women, they all have their separate things that are going, but you know, when we, I feel like for me as, you know, a woman, but also as a black woman, there are a lot of, of pressures and a lot of stress that comes on a daily basis, just like from example just at work I mean not now not now in my current job but you know before it's like I always have to censor myself so much like you want to say something and but you really can't because you got to think about your job you got to think about how they're going to see you got to think about this and think about that 
then you leave there, you go to the grocery store, you go out these places, then you got to worry about being, uh, you know, harassed, you know, I, you know, harassed by these Men. people, guys, you know, that are hounding you and, you know, you get home and, you know, you, you go shopping and, you know, oh, yeah, I can't wear this, I can't buy this because if I wear this and buy this, they're going to think this and think that. And, you know, just daily frustrations do come with females as well. And, you know, I always hear, you know, everybody say, like, you know, you don't want that. And I and I definitely agree. Like, if you're going through a lot of stress, when you come home to your significant other, you don't want to stress them even more. But where do you put that? Because I feel like if you, if as a female, if you bring it to your mate, it's going to sound like, oh, you're just, you know, I don't want to, you know, be na- you, you like either nagging or, you know, you being too, you know, gossipy or, you know, they don't want to hear that. So, like, where do we take that? And uh, where is I, can I, that? Where can I, I, can, I can't so be in a relationship I like that. that. Because I, that's, that's my issue whenever someone, well, not an issue, but that always runs through my mind when everyone's like, be his peace. He doesn't want to come home to that. And it's, it's like, I got to come home too. You know what I mean? Like, right. so we don't want to make it a competition, but at the end of the day, I go through stuff too. And Absolutely. I'm not living in a household where I'm going to be at home every day. I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to be at home all day, every day. So I'm going to go through my own trials and tribulations throughout the day. I'm a black woman in America. That's yeah. <laughs> that's just the fact of it. So like I I that's my thing. It should be like a, a mutual peace type of thing. But if right. we both have to have an outlet in each other, how do you navigate that without it clashing or making it seem like it's a competition? I'm so glad you said that because that's how I feel every single time it's brought up like you need to be his peace. He goes through this yeah. as a and it's like I'm a black woman. And, and right. it's un- like I and it's it's crazy because like you un, I understand that they need a place where they can come to be at peace, but at the same time it's just like I feel like not personally because I feel like if I'm in a relationship with somebody like I'm I'm creating that space so I'm gonna bring you like whatever I'm you know going through on a daily basis, but I'm just saying like overall I don't feel like that's the case. Overall I don't feel like people encourage or women have like this said safe space or this said peace where they can go and say you know my day has been crazy like you know the world has been crazy on women as as they do all the time like where do I take that where do I take my frustration where do I go to feel at peace with my mate because it's it's not overall it's not like oh they should do that that's why I think go, go ahead Daniel I, I I think that's why date nights are important um in relationships because I know at my age, I said, you going, we have to do like a date night. And I think that's when we talk about stuff, like when we're at date night, you know, you can release that. I also parts. don't want to spend my date nights talking about yeah. the issues that we have going on with the outside world. Date night is supposed to be focusing on the two people who are having a date. I'm not trying to sit there and talk about work while I'm trying to spend my night with you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, y'all remind me to say something about Sierra, but I'm going to go ahead and let Daniel say whatever he was going to say, but remind me to say something about Sierra when you mentioned date night. Um, Sugar Knox made the point, uh, got to find a balance. And that's what I was going to say even before she posted that. Like, the one thing that, that, that I feel is my opinion that we have misconstrued when it comes to relationships is um, that whole 50-50 thing. Stay with me. I'll let you know what I'm getting at. To mm-hmm. me, there is no such thing as 50-50 in a relationship. Yep, okay? I- because there's going to be days where your spouse is only going to be able to give 20%. Mm-hmm. It's only going to be able to give 30%. So what yep. needs to happen is we need to give that extra 20 or 30% to make up the 100%. Now, of course, it gets it's a stigma because a lot of times in relationships, one person's always giving more but that's where you just have to find the balance so what i mean is even if we it, my my uh opinion whitney is even if we're both had a horrible day at work right mm-hmm. and we're just like i just cannot wait to get home to my baby to tell her how they had me messed up right okay? <laughs> um the simple fact is get yours out let me get mine out the, the problem is, I think a lot of times men and women, they'll come home from those bad days and take those bad days out on their spouse. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. And Unfortunately. that's where the problem lies. I'm, I hate arguing. I hate fighting. Don't 
and I say it all the like whenever I was in a relationship, I was in a relationship for two years, my last relationship. And I would tell her, like, tell me about your day. She start having an attitude with me. I'd be like, all right, babe. Do not take what, what happened at school or what happened at work out on me. Tell me about what happened, but still talk to me mm-hmm. civilized. And I'm gonna do the same with you. I might be down, I might be aggravated, but you don't take that negative energy even though it's a negative situation you want to talk about and you want them to be your, your safe space, you don't take that energy out on them. That makes sense. It makes That's sense. where the balance comes in. Yeah. You know what I'm That's saying? What- I'm mad right now. I'm pissed off because, you know, I got laid off or something like that. I'm pissed off, but I'm not going to come and be like, why are the dishes in the sink? Like, I'm not going <laughs> to take that out on you. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be like, okay, what did I do? I didn't <laughs> no, know. It, it'll be like more like, boy, fuck you and them dishes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? And then you already mad. So we right. arguing about something. And we weren't even mad at each other. We couldn't wait to get home to each other. But now we're mad at each other and I'm sleeping on the couch. You know, you know I, what I'm saying? Think, because of I, what happened. That, that's important. I think, I think that's why people pull up in the driveway now <laughs> and, and sit, sit there the and sit yeah. there for a minute. Yeah. Like sometimes you got to, yeah. before you get home, before you even get on your street, just try this, you guys. I know it's corny, but just try it. Before you get on your street and pull in your driveway, just roll all the windows down and let all that negative energy, <laughs> let all well, that I'm, negative energy I out. Did I did that one time while I was still at Silver Trace and Mary. I fell asleep in the car. I didn't wake up till I was home. <laughs> Yeah, just and then roll it back up and then just sit there for a moment and then sometimes you have to do those self affirmations like yeah, yeah. You're, you're strong you can do this you you know yeah. before you walk in that house because like we all agree women wear so many hats like I said I don't want to be superwoman like I, I don't want to do yeah. it you know but you got it when you walk in there you are his wife or his girlfriend you are mommy you are a daughter you are a sister you are the the supervisor the team lead of your job you're like you just so many you wear so many hats. And then when you get off work from wearing those hats, those supervisor hats, now you got to go in and be the mom. You got to be the wife. You got to be the girl. You, you just yeah. so you take just, a moment for that's, yourself. Yeah, that's what uh, Marie commented in a uh, said in the comments as well. Like I think everybody needs their safe space or their time to themselves. Like you have to give your partner space. And I think when people get married or have kids, it's hard sometimes to find to that, that because yeah. you're always your mom now, especially if you have more than one kid or one that's like small in age it's just like you know you're running around all the time you're trying to help them with their homework you're trying to clothe them you're trying to get them to eat you're trying to get them to bed so it can be hard to even find like I know I have friends that are moms it's hard to find you know 15 minutes of free time where you don't have somebody pulling on your shirt or if it ain't kid it's the husband you know can you get this for me can you do that or whatever the husband got to come in and take that extra percentage that's where the balance is like if I'm married and we have kids and and I can see you're weak right now. Not weak, mm-hmm. but I can see you're you're tired. You're you're leery. Right. Okay, you go get in the bath. I got the kids. Right. I got dinner. You know what I'm saying? Like, or oh, there's a designated night that daddy That's keeps doing. There's a, a dedicated partner. night that that okay. Well, you are gonna have the house to yourself. I'm gonna take the kids to grandma's. I'm gonna take the kids out to the movies. Mm-hmm. That, that's where the that's, that's where that village come in at. Be like, hey, yeah. we need a, we just need a, yeah. a a date night. We need some time to ourselves, like. Literally. It's important. It's really Literally. important to um to have I that. Didn't, um, something that was really good too. They said, um, Quentin. He said that one of the parts. He he. I guess he lives in Atlanta. He said in his current relationship, we discuss both of our day our daily struggles during the hour commute, and then when we get home, we leave the daily struggles outside of the household. And I think Definitely. that's. Kind of I like that. That's that's really yeah. good. That's that's dope to do. Like let let's go ahead and hash it out because if you look at it, like your home should be the safe haven. Like you it don't is, want it to be that negativity and things that went that went wrong into your home yeah. because that's just creating bad vibes and stuff. You don't really have to sage in there. But, you know, like, I really like that because it's like, just leave that outside. And when you come here, it should be a loving space. It should be a welcoming space, not, you know, negativity going on, you know? Whenever I, I used to hire it, and fire people, I used to tell people all the time, whatever you got going on, leave it in the car. Mm-hmm. You, can go, you, can, you can go back to it on your break. You can go mm-hmm. back to it on your lunch. But whatever you got, leave it in the car. Because it affects the people around you. Yeah. You know what that. I'm Leave it in the car. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, can I say something right quick? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so like everything, like everything, what everybody has said, like especially like with Whitney, Whitney does have a point because we we do carry a lot, we carry a load and all that stuff. So it's not necessarily like I'm just saying that we should just be a safe haven or the safe place for a man. But at the same time, all this boils down to us learning each other. Mm-hmm. If, if that makes sense, it yeah. takes that, that all boils down to us learning each other. Um, you learn what comforts me you learn when I need my space you learn um you know why do I shut down or wait or I, hold on Pista. whose music is that because I can't even concentrate it's, on it's loud it's loud and rush oh but that's your, oh y'all let it okay go ahead <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like so the thing is we learn each other so if if something is wrong or something like that, I know I might not can't get it out of you or you might not can't get it out of me. But you do know if I just give you if we give each other or give up a, a moment that is going to come out like somebody's yeah. going to say something. So it all boils down to us learning each other so we can know how to have that safe haven place or that safe place for each other so we can know, you know, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's, yeah. that's so, very, so how we can handle each other. Thing. Yeah, that's a very important thing, Kista, because, you know, I think sometimes people get so stuck in, you know, as a as a guy may get stuck in, oh, well, society has said women, they, they need to be my safe haven, so I need to go and just dump everything there. So that's what I'm going to do. Instead of, like, thinking, okay, well, let me, you know, learn my, my wife or girlfriend to see, like, so I know whenever she may need to, to vent or whatever, like, I think it's important, like you said, to learn each other so you're not relying on what society tells you your partner is supposed to do. Like, you have to learn that for yourself. Right. Right, right. Because, see, you got, you got, actually, you got people out there, firemen, policemen, like, those type of people, they can't come home and dump that stuff on their wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, that see, that face... It's in the whole marriage is, like, you know, with police officers and people that are in, yes. like criminal law and stuff like that that that's because it's a lot of pressure and a lot of things you go through on the daily right and see they can't because they can't come home and give it to their spouse they really advise them to seek therapy or someone that they can really yeah. trust to put it out with because see you got these people especially doctors they look at it as i'm supposed to save and then now if i'm watching a person die that i'm supposed to save i can't just go home like every woman and every person can't handle that that person coming home and say babe i just watched somebody die today <laughs> uh, uh, Bay, uh, I just watched this person burn. Um, like, Bay, let me tell you about all the shootouts that I just, I just saw. Like, I just saw bodies fall around me. Like, everybody can't handle that. So, yeah. you know, they would have to see, you know, the the professional. I I mm-hmm. advise seeking the Lord and professional help as mm-hmm. as far as when it comes to that. But you know, so that that's like you said. When I don't want, you know, people shouldn't get stuck on as far as saying society saying we should be a safe place. And right. the guy's supposed to emotionally protect us too. But see, a guy, we got to learn each other. We yeah, got to we got to be able to say, "Bay, I think it's time for you to go see someone now," because you know I can't handle what you're going through. But you you know you got to go get it out. You act you know something's a little off, and you know and things and things like that. But you know that's I got to. I, I, yeah, I want to say this right here, good. like piggybacking off of what you said, Keisha. I I agree with what you're saying, and. I currently know a guy who I suggested to him that he needs therapy. I, and I said, I said, I said, look, you need to go talk to somebody. Like, seriously. Um, his home situation ain't ain't good. And then, like, you know how you you know a person enough where you can hear it in their voice and you be like, how was your day? Oh, it was good. No, it wasn't. What, what's wrong? Like, something's wrong, you know? And wow. so, of course, I could tell, like, he really don't want to talk to me about it. So I was like, you really need therapy. And so, you know, black men don't believe in that or black kind of white people, period, don't believe in that. You know, they'd rather take it to the Lord, you know. Um, but uh, I'm like, you'll go to the doctor, you know, or you go, you, you go through these drive throughs to go get COVID tests and make sure you ain't got that. Why you can't go to a therapist and talk about it or make sure, you know. But anyway, um, so it's, it's hard kind of to convince a person that, you know need that professional talk and advice it's kind of difficult to get them to go you know so i'm trying to figure out ways to get him there because i don't want to like sneakily you know pull up there and be like all right like you know because i don't want him to get mad with me about it but i'm just like yeah 
And I don't want to also, if you care, because that's one of the reasons why I can't take that extra step with him. Because I'm like, you got a lot of issues going on with you that you need to figure it out before you be with anybody, you know? And I'm like, but that's one of the top things that I don't like about you that I know could be fixed. You know, there's some things that you can't do, but that is in your control. Like that, that therapy and talking about, you know, issues and stuff, but hopefully he get it together. If not, he'll remain in the friend zone. (laughs) But all right, so let's move on to the, uh, the fifth and final topic, which is um, a quote that I think we all should have heard before. 